Good morning, dear fellow prisoners of Holy Family, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, dear friends, welcome to this reflection and prayer moment that we want to make on this Friday in the second week of Easter. And to help us in this moment of reflection and prayer, we have the very famous John chapter 6 that is being presented to us. Today, we have the opening section of chapter 6, which can be divided into three parts, actually. After today's uh, passage, uh, on Monday, uh, we will be reading the second part, which is Jesus walking on the waters to meet his disciples who are going through a very difficult time against the head uh, wind. And then Tuesday onwards, we will be reading the third part of John's chapter 6, which is a long discourse on Jesus, the bread of life. And all this, my dear friends, the whole of chapter 6, when we got to put it together, is written for us uh, according to John's whole explanation at the end of his gospel. All this is written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And believing this, you may have life in his name. So this chapter 6 is going to be important for us in our faith in Christ, in our coming to recognize who Jesus is, and in our living, therefore, his wonderful way. So let me begin chapter 6, verse 1 to 15, which is the feeding of over 5,000 people. I just want to break up into some important points, dear friends, where you can, you know, spend some time and reflect at your own convenience. I hope these are not just talks, you know, that you're taking and then you're listening and then forgetting maybe or or getting impacted by but doing nothing. Uh, no, the purpose of these reflections is to offer us a moment of personal quiet and going deeper into what is Jesus coming out to us as. With the help of John, what are we discovering about Jesus? And as we discover that, how are we putting into effect in our life. There must always be this action part of the reflection. Otherwise, dear friends, it's very boring. Otherwise, it's nothing exciting. These talks are nothing fantastic. You've got much better preachers. You've got many people who's, who write and speak in much better ways than I do. I cannot compete with them and I don't want to. But the purpose of this is so that it may trigger something in you and me, dear friends, to do something in our life. About these points, we are asked to consider in Jesus and therefore in ourselves. We begin the reading, dear friends, with uh, the notice uh, John makes that Jesus is continuously moving from one side of the country to the other, from one side of the lake to the other. He's continuously moving because he wants to meet people. He wants to be with people. He wants to give the good news. He wants everyone to know why the Father sent him and what his work, what is his good news, what is this new life he has come to offer. What's all this about? So he's moving. And John also notices, dear friends, that large crowds are following Jesus. 
uh, it seems they are impressed by the signs that Jesus gave by curing the sick. So there's some kind of impact that Jesus is making uh, on people. This might not be faith in people, that might come deeper at another level, at another time in their life. But what appears to be very strong right now is there is this impact. They are deeply impressed by it. Jesus was having an effect on their life. So this is our first point to reflect. What is the impact, dear friends, our life has on other people? In what ways are we touching them? Jesus was curing them of their sickness. We might not be curing people of physical sickness, but the question remains, in what ways are our lives impacting people at home, at work, among friends, in the neighborhood, wherever we may be, what is the impact we are making on people? Then John notices that Jesus goes up the hill. The hill is interesting and important, dear friends, because in the Old Testament, on a mount, on a hill, on a very high hill, on a mountain, God gave the people the way of life. Through Moses, he made the covenant with people, his people. They became his people through the covenant. And that was a huge teaching that Jesus is now, uh, that John is now referring to that Jesus is giving. He's sitting on this hillside, which is comparable to the Mount Sinai. And on that Mount, Moses was the mediator of that first covenant. Jesus is bringing that to perfection and fulfillment. And crowds are coming to notice this, to, to, to get into it. Yeah. And John says, when Jesus saw these crowds approaching, he began to feel a concern for them. He even asks Philip, uh, where can we buy bread for these people to eat? John notices that this is just a kind of a test that Jesus was, he, Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. And Philip, out of that good intention and he's following the conversation, he goes along with Jesus and says, yeah, I can, I can identify with your question. Even 200 denarii, 200 days wages are not going to be enough to feed this crowd. And that's exactly the point. The bread that needed to be given to these people cannot be bought. Even if you've got tons and tons and tons of money, you cannot buy to feed the millions of hungry people all over the world. Jesus is already indicating there's something much more in the concern that we must have for people and the way in which we respond in our concern for them. And that's the point. John says, one of the disciples, Simon Peter's brother, Andrew, noticed that there was a boy there with five loaves and two fish. That's an important notice, that there was somebody with something. Five loaves and two fish stand for resources, gifts, talents, qualities that are there in us, among us, 
in a huge crowd of people in the country, in the society, in the world. Yes, among all of us, there are these five loaves and two fish. John notices, dear friends, that this boy with the five loaves and two fish is ready to give it to Jesus. He doesn't know what Jesus is going to do with it, but he is ready to give this to Jesus. So the point that is made is this boy is ready to be selfless. This boy is ready to give not only the little bit that he had, five loaves and two fish, but that's all that he had. That was most probably his lunch box or his dinner box. Yeah, that was the food he had brought along. As he would listen to Jesus talking, he would munch something. He's ready to give it all up. You're beginning to get the answer to the question, where can we buy this bread? You cannot buy this bread. Because you cannot buy generosity. You cannot buy selflessness. You cannot buy self-giving, can you? No. That is the work of God in all of us. Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. And that's why he said that to test Philip. And he's saying that to test you and me too. Because... Our first uh, recourse is we go to the market, we spend some dollars or cents or whatever it is, and we buy provisions and we give. But that's not going to help people. Because where we can really feed people is from our generosity, our selflessness, and our total self-giving. That Jesus took. He just didn't take the five loaves and the two fish. He took, he took this boy's total self-giving. He took this boy's everything he had. And he said, distribute it. And as that was being distributed, Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to do what God wanted to do. And what does God want to do? God wants to feed all people. God didn't make anybody to be hungry and starving and malnutritioned. No, God didn't make anybody for that. And yet we have so many hungry people, so many children dying every day of malnutrition. We have so many people in much misery and suffering. And we continuously ask why. And we begin to see that we have been trying to reach them only materialistically which is necessary. It's one part of what people need yeah, for everyday life. We need that. But where can we get that? It's not from the dollars and cents and the power of our economic system. It's going to be from the power of our faith and our love and our being like that little boy with five loaves and two fish. But that little boy with five loaves and two fish himself stands for someone even greater. He stands for Jesus. Because
Because where could you and I get salvation from? Where can you and I get eternal life? Nowhere. Except from Jesus. Who gave his all. He emptied himself. He was totally selfless. He was totally self-giving. He gave all that he had, even the last drop of his blood. And that feeds you and me today, dear friends, not just with the materialistic food that you and I need for everyday life, but that gives us the way to be today, to be like Jesus, to feed the hungry and the needy, and to be there for those who depend on us. Yes, it is only at this point of our meditation and reflection when we can ask ourselves, what are our five loaves and two fish? And how are we ready to give all of that for the good of everyone around us in family, community, society, and world? How can we be more and more like Jesus, whom we are growing to believe in more and more every day? as the Christ, the Son of God, who gives us life. What is this life? This life is the life of that little boy, that life of Jesus, that life that is to be spent. And in that spending, crowds and crowds and crowds are fed because the love, the generosity, the goodness that touches us and through us touches people, brings them out of whatever may be their need, constitutes them as persons with life and dignity and makes them live the wonderful way God meant us to live. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us gifts and talents. We thank you for our five loaves and two fish. We thank you for all the resources that you've given us. Maybe not many, just five and two, which among a big crowd looks like so little. But Father, we thank you for these gifts these resources, these talents that you have given us. We pray, Father, that you really speak to us deep in our hearts, that you touch us, that you transform us, that somehow, just like you made that little boy be so self-giving, you also make us to be like that, Father. And we pray that as we respond to your working in our life, we too may be able to get that bread, that we too may be able to share that bread, and we too may be able to enjoy the fruits of that bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.